This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. So this chapter goes through and adds in an additional complication that you could see with regards to your groups question in question number one. What we're looking at now is changes in group structure, whereby your changes in group structure are going to go through and follow two potential scenarios. Because what we've seen previously, whenever we've bought shares within either a subsidiary or bought shares within an associate, we've gone from having zero shares up to enough shares to give us control or enough shares to give us influence. Okay. What we're going to go through and look at now is whereby you have a step acquisition. So instead of going from a 0% holding straight up to, if you like, having control, we're going to acquire shares in stages. Okay, uh, So that will take us through all the various stages in terms of our holdings. And we want to know how to account for the changes within our holding. Okay, Conversely, something totally new. Uh, because we have dealt with, if you like, a little bit of acquisitions previously uh, when we've just bought a subsidiary and had zero and gained control. But the whole step disposal is then different. OK, it's something totally new. Yeah, We are now selling shares. So we had control and maybe we begin to sell our shares to the point whereby maybe we, we, we ultimately lose control of the subsidiary. And what we need to go through and do there is we need to begin to look at how to deal with those changes in ownership okay so what we've got there is the way in which i'd look at it is i'd look at it in terms of a, a, a line that, that determines our percentage holding if you want think about it as a number of steps okay and imagine we have 100 steps and each one step represents one percentage ownership okay because what you've got there if you have shares and you are anywhere on the first up to the 20th step then you just have a nice simple trade investment don't we and for simplicity we'll just say that's measured at cost okay it could be fair value through profit or loss it could be fair value through other comprehensive income but let's not confuse it shall we okay you just have an investment that's carried at cost that is the accounting treatment isn't it if it's different Fair value through profit or losses, gains and losses go to profit or loss. If it's through OCI, gains and losses go to OCI. If, however, we then are somewhere on the 20 to the 50th step, we own between 20 and 50% of that entity. If that's the case, we have the power to participate. So we have significant influence. How do we account for significant influence? What's the, the, the accounting treatment given to it? Excellent. We equity account, don't we? OK. Then what we have is if we own greater than 50 percent, we no longer have the power to participate or that right to be heard. We have the power to direct the activities, don't we? If we have the power to direct the activities, then we have control. If we have control, what do we prepare? Yeah, group accounts. And therefore, the accounting treatment is to consolidate, isn't it? OK. And that's important to think about. You need to think about the different stages as we go along the staircase, whether we're going up the stairs with an acquisition or down the stairs with regard to a disposal. But depending upon where you're sat on those stairs depends upon the accounting treatment. Anything greater than 50, we consolidate. Anything between 20 and 50, we equity account. And anything less than 20, we go through there and just treat it as an investment at cost. OK. Technically speaking, fair value through profit or loss or fair value through other comprehensive income. OK, so what we'll go through and look at first is if we have a, a step acquisition. So that's whereby we're going up the stairs, isn't it? So we may start off with 20, maybe go up to, say, somewhere between 20 and 50 and then ultimately have control. OK, so that's going to be the first part of the videos going through there in terms of the stages going up the stairs. Then what we're going to go through and look at is we're going to go through there and look at the step disposals. Uh, so when we're looking at the step disposals, that's coming down the stairs and selling our shares. OK, so we start off with control and then we begin to lose ownership interest to the point maybe whereby we no longer have control. And that former subsidiary becomes an associate and so on until we get down to the bottom of the stairs. We have no ownership interest whatsoever. OK. 
the key bit right the way throughout is whether we're going up the stairs or whether we're going down the stairs is to think about that 50th step. Uh, that 50th step is vitally, vitally, vitally important because that's where the big changes arise, isn't it? Yeah, when we go through there and go up the stairs and go through the 50th step, imagine there's a door, okay? Yeah, and you've got the key to the door and you go through that door. You are now into the realms of consolidation. Previously, we did not consolidate. Now we do consolidate. And if we consolidate, things take on a whole different meaning, don't they? We need to add across the assets, the liabilities, the income, the expense. We need to calculate goodwill. We need to calculate non-controlling interest. We need to calculate group retained earnings and take account of all of those fancy accounting adjustments to take account of the, the single entity concept and the fact that now we're preparing group accounts based on substance as opposed to their legal form. Wow. There's a lot that goes on, isn't there, as we pass through that 50th step on, on the door. OK, uh, it will happen within the exam. Once you've gone through the door, it doesn't matter really whether you keep on going up and up the stairs, does it? Your percentage ownership changes. You know, maybe you had 60 and you now have 70. We still consolidate. So we just need to deal with that changes in the percentage that we own and what the change in the percentage that the non-controlling interest own. OK. Uh, similarly, if you're coming down the stairs, uh, we were previously in that realm of consolidation, weren't we? So we prepared the group accounts. Uh, if we go down the stairs and pass through that door, or sometimes it's referred to as an accounting boundary, because it's the boundary whereby the accounting treatment changes significantly. Then now, as we go down the stairs and through the door that way, we now no longer consolidate, do we? So we need to get rid of all of the the assets and liabilities of the subsidiary. That means to getting rid of not just the assets and liabilities, but the, the goodwill, the non-controlling interest. So there's a, all of a sudden, as we're no longer consolidating, there's going to be a lot that's happening in terms of, if you like, deconsolidating. Uh, and when we dispose of something, we, we usually expect some form of profit or loss on disposal, don't we? But when we're looking at the profit or loss on disposal, we were a group of companies and now we are no longer a group of companies. So when we're looking at the disposal, we're first of all going to have to look at it from the substance perspective, i.e. we are disposing of a subsidiary. And then we'll also need to look at it from the legal perspective and that legally we're just disposing of shares. We're just disposing of an individual asset. OK, so we're going to have to work out the gains and the losses on disposal there. So there's, there's quite a bit to cover uh, so it's a pretty chunky session uh, I personally think it's probably one of the more difficult aspects when you get it within an exam question just because there's so much that's going on within the group structure at the start so do spend a little bit of time thinking about changes in group structure uh, if you look at the past exam questions it tends to be the one that it is the more regularly examined okay it could form the full part of the group's aspect in a group question, or it could just form a small part. OK, so even if you had, say, complex group structures, as I say it, you could have some change in group structure, albeit a very small part. OK, but that's just going too far. What I just want you to think about now is your 100 steps, where that accounting boundary is on the 50th step and how the accounting treatment changes as you go up the stairs. And you go down the stairs because what we're going to go through and start off with next is we're going to go through there and begin to look at your step acquisitions. So let's begin the fun and frolics uh, following the introduction uh, of looking at step acquisitions. And the first scenario that we're going to go through and look at is that we have no control and we go to having control. OK, so when we're going up the stairs, we go through that 50th step. OK, uh, that accounting boundary whereby we begin to consolidate. Key bit is when we have no control, it doesn't necessarily mean that we have 20% uh, and just have an investment. It could mean that we own between 20 and 50% and we have an associate and we have previously been accounting for it under influence, okay, and equity accounting. But regardless of whether we had just a simple investment, regardless of whether we had an associate, the treatment is the same. We've gone through the 50th step, yeah, we've gone through the door and we are now consolidating. OK, uh, so what you've got there, the key bit and the key bit to understand 
is that the way in which the accounting standards look at it is they say, well, look, you had your previous ownership percentage. So what we're going to go through and do there is we're going to assume that that has been disposed of. OK, so it has gone. OK, so it takes us, if you like, right the way back down to zero. OK, but then what happens is that you then re-recognize that investment uh, back up to its fair value. OK, so you go through there and if you like, revalue your previous investment up to its fair value to get it up to its its most up to date value. So if we own 40 percent, we're going to go through there and say, well, look, we've disposed of that 40 percent. Uh, at its old cost, we now re-recognize the 40% at its fair value. So you will have a gain on that old investment. And then what you have now is you look at the extra investment that you have made in order to take it from, say, 40% up to, say, 70%. OK, and that's then when you begin to start thinking about calculating your goodwill. OK, so there's two things to think about the original investment we assume is disposed of and then re-recognized to fair value. And if that's the case there, then what you have is that fair value remeasurement will give you a gain. And that gain goes to profit or loss. OK, so if I previously held 40 percent, I would dispose of the 40, re-recognize the 40 at fair value. OK, that gives me a gain to profit or loss. Essentially, if you're looking at the statement of financial position, that gain to profit or loss essentially is going to go into working five. OK, part of your group retained earnings. And then what you go through and do is with the extra investment that you have made. So maybe I've bought 30 percent more. So you had 40. You've now got 30 more, which gives you 70. You then go through there and calculate the goodwill. OK, you do just need to be very careful, however, when you are calculating the goodwill because there is one additional aspect that you need to consider. OK, remember, when you're looking at the goodwill, you need to look at the entire subsidiary, don't we? So, yes, we have paid to get our 30 percent extra. So that's the cost of the additional investment, isn't it? But we need to put in the fair value of the existing interest. So we said that we previously owned 40 percent. We have remeasured it to fair value. So with our 30 percent that we have paid, we add on the 40 percent fair value to show that we own now 70 percent of the sub and then we carry on as normal. Yeah, we go through there, add on the non-controlling interest at acquisition. So acquisition being the date that we've crossed the accounting boundary. So gone through or gone over that 50th step and through the door. And then you deduct the net assets at the date of acquisition. OK. Once you've done that, that's the goodwill acquisition. And then you carry on as normal in terms of your non-controlling interest and your group retained earnings. OK, excellent. So let's go through that and have a look at an example. OK, uh, so what we've got there, if we pull it together, it says calculate the goodwill to appear in the Jeremy group statement of financial position at the 31st of December 2015. OK. So it says Jeremy acquired 40 percent of the equity interest of David for 40 million dollars several years ago. Uh, and then on the 1st of January 2015, Jeremy acquired an additional 35 percent for 45 million. Uh, and the fair value of the identifiable net assets were 105. So we had 40. Uh, we've now got an additional 35. So we now have. Is it 75 percent? OK, if we have 75 percent, then we have the power to direct the activities and that goes through there and gives us control. So David is now a sub and Jeremy is now the parent. OK, uh, it then goes on to tell us uh, the fair value of the NCI at the 1st of January. So when it became a subsidiary was 32 million. Uh, and the fair value of the original holding was 52 million. OK, uh, there we go. So, right, let's go through, uh, work out the goodwill. So the cost of the additional investment, essentially, that's thinking about our 35 percent, isn't it? 
we've just bought that for 45 million haven't we so we're going to work in millions of dollars okay uh, the fair value of the existing interest so we previously owned 40 percent didn't we uh we're told that that fair value is there as 52 million uh, the non-controlling interest at acquisition so 35 and 40 is 75 the non-controlling interest must be 25 and you can see there that we've valued 100 percent of the subsidiary haven't we which is why we include that existing 40 percent interest at fair value to show it at its most up-to-date value but regardless of that the non-controlling interest at fair value was there was it at 32 million uh, and it tells us that the identifiable net assets so 100 percent of them are there at 105 million 45 plus 52 plus 32 less 105 gives me there is it 24 million Okay, so I have 24 million as my goodwill. The question doesn't specifically ask us for it, but I will throw it in uh, because what you've got there is that the original investment was 40 million. It is now 52 million. So what you have there is that there is a gain equal, isn't there, to 12 million dollars, and that gain. Of 12 million dollars what would go into working number five within your group retained earnings okay i've kept it simple uh, i've made the assumption that the 40 percent ownership didn't give us any influence uh and we shall worry about that uh whereby the the old investment if you like was an investment in an associate uh, whereby you take your cost plus your share of post acquisition profits and then that gets revalued up to fair value okay uh, I'm not too worried about that at this point in time. Uh, we're just demonstrating how it works with regards to the goodwill and how to calculate the gain. Uh, the gain takes the updated fair value compared to the previous value of the investment. OK, there we go. So let's go through and have a look now what happens whereby we have control. So we've already gone through the accounting boundary we've gone through the door on that 50th step okay so we are consolidating we've already calculated the goodwill uh, we already know what the nci is we already know what our group retained earnings are however what then happens is that we buy more shares uh, and as we buy more shares we move up the stairs don't we but we're still consolidating so we're still going to put in 100 percent of the parents assets and 100 percent of the parents liabilities and 100 percent of the subs assets and 100% of the subs liabilities, that doesn't change. The goodwill has already been calculated. Remember, the goodwill was calculated ages ago uh, when we went through the door and crossed the accounting boundary, didn't we? Okay. All that happens now is we actually have a true change in ownership. Okay. Uh, and what we're doing is by buying those additional shares, we are reducing the non-controlling interest, aren't we? because we know what the non-controlling interest was. If we buy more shares, we are buying more shares from the non-controlling interest. So we need to reduce the non-controlling interest, okay? So when we pay cash, we're gonna credit the bank. We're then gonna go through and reduce the non-controlling interest. And when we think about reducing the non-controlling interest, you know, what do the non-controlling interest actually own? Well, they own the subsidiary's net assets, and if it's the full goodwill method, they own their portion of the goodwill. So when we're looking at the non-controlling interest, we need to work out what the non-controlling interest is and reduce it by the appropriate amounts. Okay. So what we have here is that we have an increase in our ownership, which gives a reduction in the non-controlling interest. OK, so what you've got there is that you credit the bank uh, with the amounts that you go through there and pay. You then debit the non-controlling interest. And then what you go through and do there is you throw in a balancing figure because what we pay might not necessarily be equal to the reduction in the non-controlling interest. So you will put in a balancing figure and that balancing figure will go there to your other components of equity. OK, I don't think the examiner is too fussed. If you were to put it in retained earnings, 
I don't think they will go through there and penalise you. Uh, but let's go through there and put it within the other components of equity. Okay. Key bit is what you've got there is that there is no gain or loss to be calculated whatsoever. Uh, you know, all we've done is just a transfer between owners. Okay. I've given a little bit of cash to some of the non-controlling interest shareholders and in return, I'm getting some of their net assets and getting some of their goodwill. Okay. Uh, so let's go through and have a look at it and how we play around with it. Uh, so it says continuing from, from example number one. Uh, the example was with it, Jeremy and David. Okay, so let's just go there and check. Uh, so in example number one, the key bit that you've got there is that we had 75%, wasn't it? If we had 75%, the non-controlling interest had 25%. Okay, so what we've got essentially is we have, is it 75%? Uh, what happens there is we've acquired a further 5%. Uh, that takes us up there, is it, to 80%. So what you had there previously was a 25% NCI. And you now have, is it, a 20% non-controlling interest. Okay. Uh, in doing that, uh, we paid, was it, 8 million so we're going to credit the bank is it there with 8 million and when we reduce the NCI we want to reduce it from a 25% ownership interest to a 20% ownership interest now, now how do we go through and do that well what we're going to do is we're going to look at the non-controlling interest and we're going to look at it based upon your your original 25% investment so what you've got there is the non-controlling interest that we had at acquisition. So the original, going back to example number one, the non-controlling interest that we had at acquisition was that 32 million, wasn't it? Okay, that's what that 25 million was worth. So the NCI acquisition was 32. And then we need to add on 25% of the post-acquisition movement in net assets uh, well here remember when we gain control of the subsidiary that was on the 1st of January 15 uh, we've changed the ownership on the 31st of December and since the acquisition there has been 10 million dollars worth of profits so if we can put that in 25% of 10 is that 2.5 which gives me 34.5 okay so that's what the NCI was and remember that's equivalent isn't it to a 25% holding what we need to do is we need to be able to take that down to a 20% holding we need to reduce it by an amount to take me down to the 20% NCI okay so we're going to have to debit the non-controlling interest to reduce the NCI, but by how much? Well, you've got to be very careful. Be careful that you don't just take 5% because it's not 5% of the NCI that we're giving away, is it? Okay. You know, what you have there is the NCI is related to 25%, isn't it? So we need to work out what each percentage is worth. So divide it by the 25%. And then multiply by 5. So 34.5 divided by 25 times by 5 gives me there is it 6.9. Giving me NCI at 27.6 for my 20% holding. Okay. Yeah, that's a bit challenging. If, if you, you, you're curious about the 5 25ths, think about that as a big slice of cake and that slice of cake represents your 25 percent ownership interest so there's 25 slices yeah you are then removing five of those 25 slices so you're removing five 25ths aren't we so five 25ths of 34.9 or 34.5 is 6.9 which gives me then 27.6 it's this figure here 
that would appear at the year end on the group SFP. Uh, but the question wanted us to go through, if memory serves me right, it wanted us to prepare the journal entry. So we paid, was it 8 million? So what we've got there is that we're going to go through and credit the bank. Is it with 8 million? I'm going to debit the non controlling interest. Is that there with 6.9 million? Because that is the reduction that I had to process to the NCI to get it to the 20% holding. And then I will debit my other component of equity as a balancing figure. So that's going to reduce your other component of equity. 8 less 6.9. Is that there as the $1.1 million? Okay, it's imperative that you can follow that scenario there in terms of what we're doing with the debits and the credits because that's going to form part of a bigger overall question. We'll do a bigger overall question right at the very end of the chapter, but for now, I just want you to focus on dealing with that change in ownership. And the most important aspect of it is this appreciating. That the NCI is currently worth 25%. So to work out the reduction in the NCI, you don't take 5% of that figure, you take 5 25ths, don't we? Okay. There we go. Excellent. Uh, that's it in terms of the step acquisitions for now. Uh, we'll go through there and cover it a little bit more a little bit later on. See you later.